My good friends, it's with joy and sincere humility that I announce the happy news that reached me only today. This year I shall be elevated to the ranks of the nobility. I shall kneel before Her Majesty, she'll touch my shoulders with the blade of her sword, and pronounce the traditional words, Arise, Sir Lucius. how pleasing it is for any man who has devoted long years of his life to the selfless service of Her Majesty to receive this accolade as his reward to the Queen. Delightful evening. Has my niece returned yet? No, not yet. I wish to be alone now. Premature Lucius Clark. A thief and a murderer shall never be a knight of the realm. What? Who are you? You've been expecting me. I'm the avenger of your friend Charles Mannings. I didn't murder Charles Mannings. That's the truth. I know all about it. You were his friend, then you robbed and strangled him. That is not true. I demand an explanation. Where are the uncut diamonds you stole from your victim? What diamonds? Diamonds from Kimberley worth six million pounds. <laughs> more than that. For me, they're worth a lot more. But if you kill me, you'll never find where the diamonds are. I shall make your life a hell on earth until you give me what is rightfully mine. Don't bother trying to frighten me. It won't work. You don't even have the courage to show your own face. I have many faces. I can be anyone. I advise you to remain at Blackmore Castle. 
Any attempt you may make to sell the diamonds will mean your death. Back late. Yes, Uncle, I know. I thought I'd never finish at the office. We had to go to press at 10 o'clock. What happened outside? What made you slam on the brakes? I had to. I almost ran over the Lord of the Manor. Come in, Lord Blackmore. After a fright like that, you probably need a whiskey. Good evening, Lord Blackmore. Back from Scotland so soon? Yes, since yesterday evening. You had guests, or I'd have been in to pay my respects earlier. It's lucky that my brakes are so good. I'm just a reporter, and I prefer writing news to getting stuck with the obituary notices. That's not what I'm paid for. Well, tell me what happened. He jumped out in front of the car. I suddenly saw a dark shadow and just had time to put on the brakes. Where were you? I... I was in the bushes following a love call. What? Yes. The love call of the pale crested throstle. A bird that makes its nest in bushes, usually. I wanted to record its love song on my tape recorder. <laughs> Here. Thanks. I study the mating habits of our feathered friends. It's my latest hobby. Also, I'm fond of collecting proverbs from all over the world. I'm going to write a book about it someday. Yes. I think it was Confucius who once remarked, it's impossible to lead a tranquil life when your neighbor is noisy. And so... Here's to tranquil coexistence here at Blackmore, Clark, old man. Yes, but please don't run in front of my car again. And now, if you'll be good enough to allow me, I'll pop up to the tower. Do you have enough room up there in the tower? It makes me shudder just to think of it. Why? If you hadn't rented my castle, I'd have sold it to pay the tax man. I'm very happy in the tower room, my dear, believe me. That way, I'm far from the hustle and bustle, you know. You saved my life, by the way. A bird in hand is worth two in the bush, my lord. Good night, my lord. Good night, Mr. Clark. Good night, Miss Dorset. Don't follow any more plume throstles tonight, my lord. You run the risk of getting shot at. I assume you're joking. You were rather impolite to him. He gets on my nerves. Oh, but uncle, no Blackmore is just a harmless lunatic. What makes you think lunatics are harmless? Hamlet pretended to be mad, and everyone got killed. Excuse me, please. Good night. Good night. I heard footsteps, and I thought it was nothing. Was someone with you? No, no. Why? There was a man running in the garden. I couldn't see him clearly. He was like a ghost. Don't be ridiculous, my child. It was the wind in the branches. Forget it. Go to your room now. Good night. Oh, by the way, Uncle, I forgot to tell you. Mr. Tromby came to see me at the office today. I tried to talk him out of it. But he wants you to settle your account with him. Don't worry, I'll see to everything, my dear. Tomorrow morning, I'll go to London and liquidate a few of my holdings. Then I shan't worry. Good night. Good night.
Please put me through to London. Gerard, 9734. <laughs> Scavenger in. I would like to speak to Mr. Tavish. The chief won't be coming in tonight. Is there a message? Just tell Mr. Tavish. Tomorrow I'm sending his special Havanas over. Mm, special Havanas? Yes, don't worry. I'll tell him. <laughs> Just a second. I'll be with you right away. Recording song process. Oh. End of recording. Bombs away. landlord. What are you doing in the kennels then? It shouldn't happen to a dog. And tell those beastly hounds to sit still. I want to get out of here. Okay, they won't hurt you. You're a fine young lad. What are you called? Oh, I'm Philip, but everyone calls me Flip. All right, Flip, how'd you get so dirty? There was a mole I was digging for. I almost got her a second ago. I'd better dig a little deeper. Oh, uh, well, don't dig too deep. This castle was built on an ancient robber's hideout. It's honeycombed with secret tunnels. Then I might find some hidden treasure. Oh, don't count on that. There was treasure once upon a time, only my famous ancestors spent it all. I think you'd better leave them well alone. You might wander around in one of those passages forever and never find your way out. That shadow you saw last night in the park when you arrived, can you describe it to me? Of course, if you wish. It was large and black, and it moved. Why, Clarence, that's absolutely ridiculous. No one could have been in the park last night. 
Inspector, my niece has a somewhat lively imagination. In every ghost story, there's a grain of truth. I am sure I saw something, Inspector. You're a reporter. Perhaps you're withholding the facts to write an article. I need to have facts to write an article. I'd be happy to tell Scotland Yard anything useful. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the cigars. Someone's asking about cigars, I believe. I've been somewhat delayed. I'll see that they're sent over later today. Well, I guess that's all for now. I'll say goodbye. That letter carved on his head looks like a W. Upside down, you mean. From the front, it's an M. Then one of us must be the murderer. Either it's you, M. Mitchell, or it's me, Watson. Cigarette? No, thanks. I'm giving them up. Oh, bad for your health. Well, in my opinion, the old boy's niece knows more than she's telling. We'll find that out later. Did you notice anything about the uncle? No, I didn't. I couldn't keep my eyes off his niece. That girl's got everything. It's not true of her uncle. He's missing the little finger on his left hand. Oh, too bad if he plays the piano. The finger marks on the throat of the corpse show the strangler had only nine fingers. Next window, please. But I want to... Sorry, next window. Scotland Yard, I want to ask you a question. About a quarter of an hour ago, you put through a call from London to Blackmore Castle. Who was calling? It was the same blonde who telephoned yesterday. And how do you know it was a blonde? Because she had a voice like a blonde. <clears throat> What's the number? I'd like the telephone number of this lovely blonde voice. One moment. Ah. I had a hunch we'd be meeting again soon. I have a call to make. The castle phone isn't working? Some conversations are not fit for a house phone. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Hello? Editor's desk? Oh, Mr. Rogers, it's Claridge Dorset. Hmm? I have information for you concerning the Blackmore murder. Uh-huh. I think we're on to a great story. Here's the heading. The Strangler of Blackmore Castle. <gasps> oh, my. Stop trying to be uh, funny. You should have seen your face, Claridge. So what on earth are you doing here? I came to telephone. We're both on the same story. You keep out of it. This is my school. Oh, no, don't say that. Let's work together this time. A great crime story by Mike Pierce and Claridge Dorset. Mm. On one condition, Michael. My name comes first. Why, of course. Your name in big letters. And mine in little. Hello, is this Gerard 9734? Old Scavenger Inn. Excuse me, wrong number. Old Scavenger Inn. Mm, I know it. talking to? Nobody. It was a wrong number. Anything else? When the man from Blackmore comes, send him to me. If he shows up at all. He'll come. I'm not sure, but there was something in Clark's voice I didn't like. Could it be that he's had a better offer? Don't be silly. He knows that no one else has the guts or the money to take those stolen rocks off his hands. He'll send his man along.
Did you require something, sir? In case it's of interest, my name is Trombie, and I'm a lawyer. I'm sure that my visit isn't unexpected. I will announce you, sir. He's come. In a good humor? Determined and aggressive. Better bring the sherry. Interrupt him every time he speaks. I want to stop the flow of his conversation. Ah, Mr. Trombie. I'd like to thank you for saving me a trip to London. Sit down, won't you? I know how much you dislike traveling, especially when you have urgent things to settle. Well, life shouldn't always be one long mad rush. In my private life, I can be patient only as a lawyer. I may not indulge in such luxury. The 21st birthday of your niece was three weeks ago. And uh, I would remind you that as her trustee and guardian, you were obliged... Sherry, sir? Uh, you, uh, no, thank you. Not now. You are missing something. Very well, if you insist. It's absolutely excellent. Uh, but to continue, I must beg to remind you, you were to put your niece's fortune at her disposal on her 21st birthday, and you must do it now, if you still can. My dear Mr. Trombe, are you suggesting to me that I have been making speculations with money that isn't mine? Just a moment, Mr. Trombe. I'd like to make one thing clear. I gave my uncle permission to make some investments with my money. You had no right to give him permission, and he had no right to accept it. Whether you like it or not, the court will be forced to take action. Three times I've granted your uncle a delay, but now I have no choice. I'll give you 24 hours to settle the matter. That's unnecessary. You'll have it tomorrow. Really? I have just liquidated some securities. You've obtained the cash, I trust? As good as. I shall believe it when I see it. My friend Tavish has a birthday tomorrow. I'm sending this box of cigars to him. A present from me. The address is on it. He will give you a sealed envelope. I'll take the station wagon, sir. You trust those stones to the grubby hands of a gardener. Why must we sell them? A knight of Her Majesty cannot have bad debts hanging over him. happened here? That looks like an accident. Hey, you all right? Don't try it, Trombie. If you think you can blackmail me, you're making a big mistake. I won't be taken for a fool any longer. What happened to the diamonds Clark sent to you? <laughs> but what do you mean? It was you, perhaps, who waylaid the messenger. Why should I do that? Oh, well, you might have found a client who'll pay more money. Perhaps you're trying to swindle me out of my cut. So for the last time, where are those diamonds? If this man was over by a train, we should have found the head by now. I have a distinct feeling this was the driver of the Blackmore station wagon. The question remains, where is the head? Even though we don't have the head, the Strangler's hand marks are there. This man was dead before he was put on the track. I'll bet anything that this murder is the work of our friend Nine Fingers. But what's the motive? Not robbery, neither one of them could have had much money on him. Yes, but both these murders seem to point in the same direction, to Blackmore. This is just a hypothesis, but I think that these random murders could have an explanation. They might be to frighten someone. Yes, but who? I don't know. Anyway, we can always try looking in the archives of the colonial office. We may find something on Lucius Clark. Mm. Your sherry has just arrived. 
The postman called and gave it to me by mistake. Oh, very strange. I didn't order any sherry. But it is addressed to you. Ah. Well, anyway, thank you. M again. M for Mannings. <laughs> Hello, Goldilocks. How's your sweetheart at Blackmore? What sweetheart? Are you nuts? The one you called up on the telephone. Last night and this morning. I don't remember calling up anyone. They told me it was a blonde voice. Are you being funny? Funny or serious? Any way you like, sweetie. I'll take gin, please. One gin. for someone who used the telephone here. Oh. Anyone can telephone here. For practically nothing. I'm interested in someone who called Blackmore. Ah. It was about cigars. Cigars? Oh. Well, then. Would you like one? Thanks. I don't smoke. Ah. Well, then, why are you so interested in cigars? Nicotine isn't against the law yet. Is it? Smells expensive. Yeah. Very best. I see. A lot of customers here. A cream of society. Isn't it? Looks like business is booming. Thanks. I do all right. And I must say I envy you that. I hope it'll stay all right. Watson, what'd you find out? There's no record of Lucius Clark at the Colonial Office. Uh-huh. They also told me there was a big fire a few years back. Many of the archives were destroyed. Mm. Rather convenient. What do we do now? Nothing at present. I'm sure that between this place here and Blackmore, there's some kind of a link. Right now, it's nothing much to go on. Only I think that before much longer, we'll discover the whole setup.
Wait. What do you want? Here. Cut these stones. No. You mustn't take them away from me. I couldn't bear that. You've taken so many. There are still enough left. Don't take them. They're all I love in the world. Listen to me, will you? You got five years in prison once for diamond robbery, didn't you? Nobody else would employ you as a cutter. You hear? Nobody. Diamonds are my art. No one can cut stones like me. I know that. I've got to pay Trombie now. There is no other way. You do have another way. Which? Miss Claridge, your niece. If she were to have an accident... Are you mad? Just mind you don't have an accident. Hands are trembling, Lucius Clark. I warned you. Your life would be forfeit if you didn't return what doesn't belong to you. Where are those diamonds? Here. Here they are. Mr. Clark! What is the meaning of this? Uh, uh, you spoiled the love song of the nightingale. I want you to stay in if I... Uncle Lucius! What's happened? Where is Anthony? Where is Anthony? Here, Mr. Clark. What were you doing outside? I heard a noise, so I went to see. Well, what did you see? You're all closing in on me. You, you! Only Trump is missing. You idiots! Get out! Get out! Get out! Uh, Uncle Lucius, for heaven's sake, what's wrong? What is it? My heart. My heart. I fetch your drops. Uncle isn't very well. Send for a doctor. Go and send for Dr. Holloway at once. What's wrong, Anthony? Didn't you hear what I said? Uh, uh, Uncle Lucius! Uh, uh, the package. The package must go. Tonight. Send it tonight. Go right away and put this packet in my car. I've got to drive to London and surgeon. Do you think I can leave my uncle alone for a while? Certainly. By all means. Your uncle will sleep now, and I'll remain by his side. Thank you.
Miss Claridge. Thank you. May I wish you a pleasant journey, Miss Claridge? Thank you. Have you any lighter fluid? I've run out. <sighs> Mike, you're always scaring me to death. But what are you doing here? I'm covering the same murders as you. And I seem to recall you promised me we'd work as a team together. Hmm? So what do you do? You go your own way behind my back. But anything you can do, I can do too. I've found something out. Fred, park the old bus, will you? What have you found out, Mike? I was at Blackmore. And I saw a shadowy silhouette running in the park like a lunatic. Then what? No more. It disappeared through the woods like a phantom. Then out came Anthony and took your car out of the garage and put something in it. So I put two and two together, and you see, I've caught you red-handed. You're quite wrong. I've got to go up to town and deliver something for my uncle. Oh, listen, you get around quite a bit. Tell me, do you know the old scavenger inn? You're not going there alone, no. I'll come too. And your car? I'll leave good old Fred in charge of it. See you later. fairly busy tonight. Mind your paws, we aren't married yet. Excuse me, do you know Mr. Tavish? I have a packet to give him. Let me take it. No, I must give it to him myself. His office is back there. I'll wait here. He's there. Go on in. Thank you. Mr. Trombi, what are you doing here? I have business everywhere. And may I ask the same question of you, Clary? I wish to see Mr. Tavish. This is Mr. Tavish. Good evening. Good evening. Are you all alone? No, with one of my colleagues. My uncle sent this to you. He couldn't get here himself. He's not very well. He said it's urgent. Oh, yes, I know all about it. Uh, just a moment. I'll be uh, right back. get those stones. I must get them. If he refuses to give them to me. Now, now. Someone or something is scared of it, Mr. Lucius Clark, I think. That doesn't matter to me. He made an agreement. I'll send a man over to Blackmore right now. I'll give him special instructions. He'll go there and find out just what's what. Please send my greetings to your uncle. I wish him better health. Thank you. I'm supposed to give you this envelope in return for the package. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. <laughs> 
Oh, what a delightful surprise. A surprise, certainly. Did you come to arrest me? Not yet. Then do excuse me, I have to rush. Mike, let's go now. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mitchell. Cliff Mitchell. My peers, a colleague of mine. Mr. Mitchell is from Scotland Yard. Oh, how interesting. Good night. But stay just a moment, will you? I want to ask you a question. I don't see how I can help you, Mr. Well, shall Mitchell. we go over here? Yes, good idea, Inspector. Perhaps you can tell us a thing or two. <laughs> this Mitchell's out there asking questions. Is he? We'd better get out of here. Go and change. We'll wait for you. Allow me. I'll take you home. gave the press information, not the opposite. My reporter's nose tells me that I'm in the way, uh, unless you want me to stay. Just ladies, no gentlemen. Oh, uh, then I leave you in good hands. Call me if anything turns up. I'll do that. By what right are you keeping me here like this? You're a suspect. How do I drive there? How do I drive there? Take the motorcycle. I had something to deliver for my uncle. It's of a private nature. So either you arrest me right now or let me go home. I can't keep you. You'd better go. Get on to the yard, and then make out a report. I'll take Miss Dorset home. Meet me at Blackmore Castle.
You hear that? The wind on the moor. Come on, let's go in. Are you still up? I was waiting for you, Miss Clary. Lay the door open. We're expecting company. After that fright, what we need is a whiskey. <clears throat> May I ask Miss Clary if she will need me any longer? How is my uncle? He's asleep. He retired early. Thank you. You can go. Good night, Miss Claridge. I'd prefer to live in a house in London, a light, modern house. It's funny. This castle scares me to death. And if it'll reassure you, Miss Dorset, I'll spend the night here. How nice, but... I think I'd better. I'll manage fine, don't worry. Good night, Miss Dorset. Good night. And thank you. forget that we have a secret pact. Ever your B.M. Um.
Inspector. Yes? Oh, you've been hurt. Someone didn't want me to stay the night in Blackmore. Who? That man. I'm afraid he got away. The strangler. The man with nine fingers. What's he look like? Did you get a good look at him? No, he was masked. Medium height, but very powerful. Maybe he'll come back. No, that's unlikely. But anyhow, I know his name. What is it? That is, I know his real name. What he calls himself now is anybody's guess. You know what these are? A bunch of letters. Uh-huh. They're old love letters sent by a woman named Betty Mannings to Lucius Clark when he was district governor at Kimberley in Africa. Here's what's odd about these letters. When Betty Mannings wrote them, she was married to Clark's assistant, his best friend, Charles Mannings. Betty Mannings is dead. Tomorrow's the anniversary. And somebody else has recently been reading these love letters. If her tomb is in a London cemetery, it might be interesting to see if tomorrow somebody goes to put flowers on it. That'll be what we're going to find out first thing tomorrow morning. Don't talk to me about Tavish because he's just a dirty, cheap rat. He's up to his neck in it with Clark. If we don't act independently, mighty quickly, we're going to get swindled out of our cut because we've got to find out where those diamonds have been hidden. That Scottish lord's just a nitwit. I'll make the idiot dangle on a string. Yes, I'll get back into my role as Lady Lemoore once again. Be seeing you. All right, tell me about the romance between Clark and Betty Mannings. There was a child. Uh-huh. The late lamented Betty Mannings gave birth to a son. But it wasn't her husband's, it was Clark's. Oh, nothing new in that. The old triangle. With a few variations. Betty Mannings writes in one of her letters, Our little son is lacking one of his fingers. Same as you. The chance that the nine-fingered son will be here to visit the grave of his mother on this anniversary is rather remote. But you never know. Well, how old would the son be today? Around about 40. Hey, look. Claridge Dorset. What's she doing here? I don't know. But I'll very soon find out. into you everywhere. It's deliberate or accidental? A bit of both, Miss Dorset. Were you related to the dead woman? I didn't know her. But my uncle is not very well. And he asked me to put some flowers on her tomb. Help! Help! Did you see who it was? It was Manning Jr. <gasps> What's your name? Who are you? I'm Betty, Betty Manning's sister. What do you know about Manning's Jr.? Where does he live? I don't know that. His wife is Gwendolyn Blythe. I was too late. He was too quick. He jumped over the wall. Is she dead? Yes, maybe a heart attack from the shock. 
I'll drive Miss Dorset to Blackmore. Watson, see to things here, and then make a point of finding out who Gwendolyn Blythe is. The sooner we search through the castle, the better. We must find out if there's some other way to get into the cellar. I think I'll try asking this young man. Hello there. Yes? Where can I find the Lord of the Manor? He's underground. Is he dead? I'll see. Uncle Edgar, are you alive or dead? A lady's here for you. In that case, I'm very much alive. Oh. No, no, don't go away. Lady Lamour is in the neighborhood on business. My name is Tommy. I'm her lawyer. We'd like to know if she wants to sell the castle. She just loves old monuments. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not very presentable. You will excuse me, won't you? Are you an archaeologist? No, a naturalist. I was interested to see how deep a mole would dig to find himself a bunny bride. I fear I know nothing about such things. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we would like to visit your castle. Oh, with pleasure. Only first come with me up to the tower. From up there, you'll have the best view. If you and your wife will excuse the mess there. <laughs> We're not married. We have visitors. I'm not expecting anyone. Please don't change the subject. I want first to know why Tavish sent Claridge back here with an envelope containing nothing but sand. You know why, Anthony. You're betraying me. You're all betraying me. Very simple. Tavish sent only sand back because he only received sand in the package. I, I put sand in that box of cigars. I gave life to those diamonds. I brought out the fire in them. They belong to me, understand? Where are they? Where, where are they hidden? You will never find out. No. If you murder me, nobody will ever know. Never. My family stems from Scotland, but you must have realized that. And my great, 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 great grandfather inherited this castle from one of his wives. It looks delightful, but honestly, I'm more interested in the strange and extraordinary. I mean, look at that absolutely wonderful skull. Oh, George. He's one of the mysteries of the manor. And there are very many of them. I suppose you have underground dungeons, too. Of course, of course. Oh, I just adore to see the dungeons if you take me. Madam, it'll be a pleasure. I must go up and see my uncle. If you like, you can stay and wait down here. No, thank you. I'm going to walk around outside. All right. See you later. See you later. you think you're doing? Give me that thing. That's not something to play with. I certainly scared you. A detective should have nerves of steel. And what made you think I was the detective, huh? After all, I saw you here the day of the murder. And where'd you get that gun? Down in the secret passage. I was exploring. Secret passage? Hmm. I'd like to have a look around. Gosh, you're really nosy. Come on, Mr. Detective. <laughs> warm down here. Yes, that comes from the boiler. Mr. Clark has installed an oil burner that goes on working all the time. He runs it in summer even, because he finds his castle too cold. Ah. Look out! Don't panic. Where are those nerves of steel? I'm not frightened. Well, just watch out. One of these days, the whole place will cave in. <laughs> hey, there's someone coming. Ooh, maybe it's the murderer. This way, please. Why, this is just extraordinary. Exactly what I want. 
How madly lucky you are to own such a superb castle. I'm afraid the tax man thinks so too. Lord Blackmore, you must come and visit me in London. I'm always at home. You should look in for tea. Did you see something moving? It was only a rat, I think. <gasps> but my dear lady, I'm here beside you. It's like the old saying. If I can only remember it, a faint heart never... Number one, fair lady. <laughs> And over there was the ancient torture chamber, and beautifully equipped. How simply fascinating. Yes, where my ancestors used to discipline their wives. And nowadays we buy them fur coats or something. Sick transit Gloria Mundi, as they say. How well you understand how to touch a woman's heart, Lord Black. Uncle Edgar, it's me. He's a detective, and I'm helping him. I don't know who that lady is, but the man in the kilt with the mustache is a friend of mine. He's the Lord of the Manor. How do you do? Mitchell of Scotland Yard. Uh, Trombley, I'm her ladyship's lawyer. This is Lady Lamore. Haven't we met before, your ladyship? I believe not, Mr. Mitchell. Well, I think I've seen everything, so shall we go? Did you notice anything interesting? Mm-hmm. She has smashing legs. You're right, Flip. Yes, but what you didn't spot, Lady Lamour pretended not to know me, yet she was scared when we met, hmm? Ah. Oh. It wasn't very hard to find out where Gwendolyn Blythe lives. She has a criminal record, diamond smuggling. Uh-huh. But how are we going to get into the apartment without a search warrant? Don't worry. This is our warrant. Give me that photo, will you? Uh-huh. Mannings, Gwendolyn, formerly Blythe. Married the 11th of December, 1959. Present address, 7 Rutland Gate, Southwest 5. This is it. Passes also under the names of Betsy, Judy, Lady Lamour, <laughs> profession, barmaid. <laughs> In big quotes. It's simple. The blonde Judy and the brunette aristocrat are the same person. And she's the wife of Mr. Mannings, Jr. Lucky fellow. With such a beautiful wife, a man would stay home. I bet we find Mannings, Jr. in her apartment now. Well, that would surprise me. There's no sign of life. Not even a light. All the better. It'll be a lot easier for us to operate. Lucius Mannings, I arrest you. Lord Blackmore. Did you call, darling? Is he your husband? Well, I give up. I'm lost. Kiss me. Put on the lights. Come on, you. Wake up. I haven't got all day. <clears throat> oh, darling. For heaven's sake, what are you doing here? Oh, sorry. What are you doing here? Well, speak up. What's going on here? <laughs> She asked me to drop in to have tea. The tea tasted odd. I believe she must have put something in it. Yes, she wanted you away from the castle. You followed the love call of a decoy bird, my friend. And I imagine that it was love at first sight, as they say. 
I really thought she cared. But Lady Lamour... The noble had... lady is, in reality, a professional barmaid back at the old scavenger. Her name's Judy. Bless my soul. feeling that we're going to have many surprises in store for us. We're nearly at the bridge. The tank has been hit. He set fire to the gasoline on the road. Get out, quickly. Missed. Is he dead? No. Inspector! You go on to Blackmore. I'll go towards London and try to find a car. Go on, step on it. I've been waiting over an hour for you. I've been doing it for 14 years and still you don't come home early. I know, Poochie, but I, I mean, yes, yes, Poochie. I'm on the way home. I suppose you think I like playing second fiddle to Scotland Yard. No, I won't be long, darling. My dear inspector, you are very well known for your individual and unconventional methods. I must admit, I'm not always opposed to that. Only when you don't even bother to dress like a civilized adult. It's going a bit too far. Really, young man. Excuse me, sir. I... No, what's the service coming to? And by the way, why are you so wet? Beg pardon, sir. I've just come out of the Thames. What? I had to hop into the water to save my life. The Stranglers of Blackmore. Not the plural. Not a band of stranglers. There's just one strangler. For heaven's sake, young man. For three weeks, you've been away from the yard. For three weeks, the papers have been calling us idiots for not having arrested this band of stranglers. And now you choose the occasion to come here in the middle of the night to say there's no band of stranglers at all. You'd better be sure there's no mistake. Tomorrow, I'll prove to you I'm right. That these murders are the work of one man. If anything goes wrong, young man, I'll see you're put back on road duty. Scotland Yard needs first-class detectives. She doesn't need magicians. No question of magic, sir. I have one ace up my sleeve. The murderer thinks I died just over one hour ago. Wonderful. Now, please, Mitchell, I didn't mean anything personal. I know that, sir. But would you mind if I drew your attention to one other point? All these murders are connected in some way with the castle of Blackmore. I'd be very grateful if you'd let me have some reinforcements. Would you like to have the Air Force? Or the British Navy. The castle's in the middle of a marsh. I think even the Admiralty would have difficulty getting the fleet through the mud. I only need enough men to surround the place. Sergeant Stone. Yes, sir? Listen carefully. Any orders Inspector Mitchell gives tonight are given with my full authority. Does that suit you? Uh, may uh, I? Of course. Go and find my assistant, Watson. Tell him to bring a car around. Thank you, sir. Already half past twelve. Who are you? What are you looking for? I would like to see Miss Dawson. My name is Mike Pierce. I'm a colleague of hers, and I would like to speak to her. Miss Dawson is with her uncle. He's not feeling well, and she wants to remain at his side. If you care to wait, you can wait inside in the hall. Please. Thank you. are beginning to shape up nicely. Your umbrella, sir. I'm Mike Pierce. I'm a reporter colleague of Miss Dawson. Glad to know you. Tromby, I'm a lawyer. This is Lady Lamour. 
Good evening, Lady Lamour. You made me look like an idiot. But you should never underestimate idiots. What do you mean, Lord Blackmore? My uncle is dead. Oh, Miss Claridge, I'm so sorry to hear about it. But life must go on, mustn't it? Has your late uncle confided anything to you that as his lawyer I should know about? No, nothing. So he took his secret with him. What secret? What secret was that? I am certain he knew who the Strangler of Blackmore is. Uh, what do you mean that uh, the Strangler of Blackmore is one of us, hmm? Why one of us? Nobody's seen his face. He goes and comes like a ghost. You're alive. Well, isn't that a surprise? Oh, by the way, how'd you know? I've been dead only an hour or two. As you know, the press has a lot of contacts in Scotland Yard. I must go now. I must go and phone the editor. Oh? Why don't you call from here? I have already tried, but the telephone is dead. Maybe somebody cut the line. And Miss Dorset, would you take care of her? I don't trust that servant, Anthony. Good evening. What do you want? What do I want? The diamonds, of course, that the old man has hidden. Where are they? Tell me. You're going to show me where those diamonds are. Courage! <laughs> You were dead. Where's Miss Dorset's room? I've just come from it. She isn't there. She must be in the catacombs. Is there a way down from here? Come on. You go around outside. I'll go this way. Take this. Huh? Thank <laughs> you. 
Inside and lock the door. All right, Flip. Now pull. Look what I found. It must have been hidden somewhere up there. I must show the detective.
Well, I submit to your authority. But you haven't heard the last of this. Mike Pierce, the reporter. No! <laughs> Mike! It's not really Pierce, but Manning's. He was her mm -hmm. husband. He wanted to avenge his father. The only trouble is he didn't know that Lucius Clark was his real father. Oh, Flip, now he's gone. Thanks to that asbestos suit, he had a brainwave. The diamonds were hidden somewhere behind the furnace. Forget all about that, will you? I heard something. I want to find a nice little house in London to forget about Blackmore forever. A place where I can do my work in Euclid. Well, <laughs> that's another story. I'm going to embark on one of the most difficult jobs in my career. Wonderful. Let me have exclusive rights on it. It'll make a terrific story. No, I couldn't. It's personal. I've got to see if Miss Claridge Dorset, a roving reporter and a charming young lady, will be the wife of Inspector Cliff Mitchell. Cliff! Go forward quietly. You hear something? That must be the love call of the lesser white-throated speckled grouse. Sounds more like someone being strangled. Gosh, he is strangling her. Remember this. For thinking, you need one head. For kissing, two. As the French say. You'll understand one day. Shh. Oh. 